What's up, everybody? We're here at Pat's Acres, the School of Drift. I have Odie Bakshis and Matt Field with me, and today we're going to teach you guys a little bit of how to tandem. Uh, we've got two pretty simple uh, cars that are very, very equal, so it'll be awesome to see who's actually the better driver today and uh, show you guys a little bit of what to do and what not to do. We'll start off a little bit with etiquette. Um, what do you guys do when you pull up to the line as a lead car driver in a tandem event? I think the most important thing when you're out here having fun, drifting with your boys, is that as a lead car, you have to run the wide line. There's no chopping anybody off, or if you make a mistake and you fly off track, jumping on in front of everybody, because you have to realize, if you're out on a track and there's people following you, you have responsibilities right. as a lead car driver. And those yeah. responsibilities are run wide, and if you mess up, get the hell out of the way. Right, and you never try anything new <laughs> oh, as yeah. a lead car in driver. In a train, no. Never, you just want to run that smooth, consistent lead run. You're already doing the lesser, exciting thing, so you got to hook it up for your boys behind, <laughs> Exactly. and then uh, everyone else can have the fun behind you. Before the tandem even starts, though, as a lead car driver, like you said, what do you do? You got to make some eye contact with the chase guy. Stack so up, that way stack them up. <laughs> they know you're comfortable that you're about to get chased and you're okay with it. Yeah. Right. So and don't you're, just zone you're out. You're gonna lead maybe. So you, I got oh, hand I'm motion. I'm one. Yep. You two. two three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just acknowledge them basically. Right. And absolutely. Then, then it's all fun. Yep. And with multi-car stuff for things like that, I always say beforehand, kind of pick your group and who you're gonna drive with. And hopefully everyone else at the event doesn't just want to stack up behind you and drive. You know, that lead car driver really puts a lot of pressure on them when there's <laughs> randos following behind Hopping everybody. In. Especially so. when you're like the third car and you think you're the last car. Right. So you oh, get a little crazy, but then there's two more behind you and without you even knowing. Something else to remember, don't hog the chase runs. Yeah. You can't hog the chase runs. You gotta you, give up. You gotta so give up. That's one of my favorite things in drifting is just drifting with your boys, small group, three or four people, and you're just constantly rotating. Yep and being aware like, all right, I just led, now maybe I'll be in third or I'll be last or right. second. You and moving around. Two, you might do a lead, you might do a chase, you might be in the middle, you might be in the back, but everybody yeah. kind of switches position. And, switches up. And a lot of that's on the lead car, just saying, oh, I'm gonna be that guy. And you pull in front of everyone and yeah. then everybody behind will gladly chase. So the lead guy is kind of the one that kind of picks that position. You have to be okay with like, all right, get out of the way, move around people. I hate when everyone's not sure what to do. Sometimes one person just has to be like, all right, I'm leading. Stack up, make sure everyone's good to go in your mirrors. Always thumbs up before you roll out. Yep. Always want to give the thumbs, thumbs up, up and then you roll out. Yep. And then uh, also as a lead car, sometimes you'll be out there and you'll have a faster car than everybody else. It's really your job to keep everybody bunched up, Absolutely. right? So if you're going into the first turn, when you're driving, you know where you're going, you're aimed in the right direction, you just peek back in your mirror and make sure you're not leaving anybody in the dust. And once you get really good at driving, you can even go a little wide, do some left foot brake and whatnot in the lead to keep everybody stacked up behind you because that's the most fun for everyone. It's no fun when the guy in front of you is just rolling out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That line changes second, third car back, it already gets tighter and tighter. So if you as the lead car is running midline, then third car is going to be way too tight. <laughs> yeah. Clown comes. On the rumble So you got to be there. aware of, hey, there's people behind me, go yeah. really wide because it's going to tighten up. For sure. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's get out there and show these guys uh, how to actually drive now that they know the etiquette, and uh, we'll see how you guys do in these things. Sweet. All right, so we picked a spot on the track that has a decently fast entry that slows down, a good area for transitioning, and then a long sweeper where we can make adjustments in the chase. This is one of the best turns of this track to really dial in that chase and start feeling it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and send them and uh, see how they do. All right, guys. Using that proper etiquette with the thumb, they got it. Looks like Matt's gonna lead here and go in. He breaks in, gets around the turn. You can see Odie chops a little bit there. He's going a little bit wide. Dives right in where he needs to. And you can really see that Matt is taking that wide line as the lead. And Odie, since it was their first time going around this turn, stayed a little bit more on the inside, which allowed him to keep some proximity. I'm sure later we'll see them as a key to be able to stay in tandem a little bit up higher. But the big easy trick to catch up is to start chopping the track on the inside. And what I mean by that is when you're riding a wide line as the chase, the lead car, the chase car can dial, dive in and it's a smaller radius so they can catch right up. Um, one of the big things is when you finally do catch up, you grab a little bit of the handbrake and it'll back you back up on them and then you can stay on their back quarter panel. Um, each of these drivers probably picks a different thing to look at but I always try to look at the person's front fender so I can see their front wheels and aim at their front fender as I'm driving. 
All right, we're gonna switch it up here and see uh, how Odie does in the lead. Both giving that thumbs up to make sure they're good. Driving in, Odie's not trying to burn them on the straightaway. Diving in, Matt gets to the inside, staying pretty good. Leaves a little bit of room in the transition. Odie's nice and wide while Matt stays in the proper midline and then that allows them to stay pretty much in sync through there. So that was pretty good. Half car gap through there. You can see the cars are adapting really easily because of them being pretty much the same car. Um, a lot of you guys will have different cars out there, a 240 and a BMW, and they act differently. So you gotta kinda grip up one car to work with the other car. So they're pretty equal. That way no one's running away from anyone. So that was their second lap in tandem, and I think they're already getting pretty comfortable in the cars. They're gonna switch positions here and uh, see how they go. So they made communication and eye contact, both gave the thumbs up. They're gonna just roll right in. And Matt's driving, he's not flooring it, trying to get away again. Hand breaks in a little early, makes a mistake. You can see Odie has to chop the track because of that. Driving in very, very close, staying on the back door. Perfect. A good example in that one is going to be, obviously, Matt did a poor job as the lead driver. He handbraked too early in the turn, drove inside, put a tire on that rumble strip, so Odie had nowhere to go. He actually had to put a tire over the rumble strip and into the dirt. That's not going to be good for either of the cars, um, so hopefully Matt picks up on that and he starts running that wider line later here. All right, so I let him know he was cutting the track a little bit as a lead car. Odie's going to lead now, and we'll see if he stays a little bit wider. All right, giving it a little bit more speed. Entering on the door, Odie very wide, allowing Matt to get right up there on him and dive into the inside perfectly. And they're about a half car gap the entire time. No one chopped the track. Everyone did what they needed to. Odie stayed wide. Matt had plenty of room on the inside to not go off track and keep that, uh, that distance uh, closed pretty well. All right, so the big thing obviously on entry, when you're on that handbrake going into that turn, as the chase driver, you wanna be able to drive up to him while he's still on the handbrake, then handbrake, so the, you have control of when you're dialing in and getting onto their door. So once you've got that set and you're lined up with them, you pick up the throttle right when they do and you can take off at the same time. And then you're just using your skill of uh, throttle to stay right on their door. And hopefully if you guys have matching cars, you can both be pretty much floored all the way through there. Now we're moving on to the transition, and that's one of the tricky parts. You gotta back up and let the person transition, then drive back onto the door. So you'll see Matt drive in here a little bit. Odie's trying to stay close. Oh! Banged it up pretty good. We're gonna have to take a look here in a second. Oh man. Oh no! Oof. Let's just get it back over there and uh, we'll see if we can at least get it cleaned up enough. So basically what happened <laughs> is Matt kind of chopped the beginning of the turn off instead of doing that late apex like Odie said earlier. And then he went wide, but what happened was is Odie was chasing, couldn't get wide because he got kind of chopped in the beginning, right? I was on left break waiting, waiting yeah. but Didn't wait I should have waited long enough. <laughs> I should have waited longer and not hit Matt. Yeah. This kind of scenario does happen quite often. Usually we have flimsy bumpers. Yeah. And when we, you know, nick bumpers, they fall off. We have a stock bumper support <laughs> that's really sturdy. It yeah. felt like a hard hit. It was a hard hit. The trunk doesn't shut on that car. I know. I know. <laughs> so we'll get that figured out. We'll get it going. And, uh, you know, this is part of the deal, though. This stuff happens. We said going here, we're like, if we leave and both these cars saw uh, every body panel attached to them, like, we did a good day. Yeah. So. It's all good. We'll figure it out. They're still attacked. <laughs> I feel like it's when you get in a little bump like this, it's kind of like a drifting deal. It happened. Obviously, Odie wasn't trying to hit me, and I'm sure there's some stuff that I could have done, like looked before I transitioned or stuff like that. But it's one of those things you try to help each other out, get their cars back together, and most important thing yeah. is getting it fixed and going back out. Yeah, it's really important. After that, go back to the pit. Don't just keep running hot laps while the other guy's trying Tell to fix Tell him you're start. sorry. Yeah, you got to go back to the pit, acknowledge what happened, and uh, help each other out, get back out there. All right, so we obviously saw the transition there. Um, Odie did not give Matt enough room there. He said he was on the left foot brake uh, to try to stop it from happening. He just didn't wait long enough. 
I uh, would really liked if you would have just bailed on the run there. Um, if you're in tandem and you're ever in a jam, you can always just bail, but stay close to them if you've got people behind you. If nobody's behind you, you can just shut down, wait, reinitiate, to kind of save your cars. I mean, if you're always going to be that close and you're going to know it and you might hit, it's always easier to just bail because it'll get you some more track time later on. Uh, but let's see, I'm going to send them and let's see if they can uh, do a clean transition for us. All right, so they both thumbs up. Odie's going to lead, Matt's going to chase. And Matt's up there on his door doing what he needs to. Here, here we go, initiates in, stays a little wide. Drives to the inside, transitions back around. You'll see a little braking there after the transition, right? And he's right on his door finishing there. Um, the braking and transition is really what allows you to stay up on their door, right? So what you're doing is you're allowing that front driver to get some room to transition, right? As soon as they've passed you to the point where they're dead even with you, you know you can pick the throttle up and drive right back onto the side of them. You can always hit the brakes and slow down, you can always pull the handbrake to add angle, but the big key is to get past that halfway point before you get back on the throttle. You don't know if they're maybe going to have a problem transitioning or if they're going to go too wide. So you're always kind of in that wait, hold, once you pass the halfway point, charge back on the throttle again. All right, so we'll real pay, really pay attention to the transition here. Odie's going to follow, hopefully not smash the back of the E36 again. Drives in right on his door where he needs to be, goes wide, holds the brake, transition, drives back in. So you'll notice he left that bit of space there this time instead of charging up, but then he was able to get right back on his door again. And basically what that is is you're diving to the inside, right? And that's going to chop the track just enough to drive you up and match back up with him again. Um, so in the chase, you're always looking to just chop that little bit of room up to catch back up to him, unless you have a much, much faster car. But these cars are pretty equal, so you just want to give them that little bit of room, then drive right back up onto the inside of them. Um, now we're going to focus on the last part of the turn here, and you'll see what kind of adjustments the chase driver's doing, and paying attention to that lead driver running the wide line. All right, so we're going to drive in over here. Odie's waiting for him again, drives in, up on the door immediately, good angle. Matt riding the brake a little bit, transition, and watch Matt just pedaling that throttle and stay right up on him on the inside while Odie is staying that wide line. So when Odie's, Odie's running that wide line all the way around, it gives all the room in the world for Matt to drive up to his door, back off, drive up to his door again by chopping the track a little bit. But again, he's not really chopping the track because Odie's running that wide line first. So. You know, Matt can be on that race line where he needs to be while Odie's running the wide line there. All right, so sometimes it doesn't always go as planned and the person spins in the lead run if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So they're throwing it in here, they're gonna run some tandem and then they're gonna do a mock spin out and show you how to bail, right? So Matt's coming in, he's gonna spin out and he's just gonna stop. So when there's a gap enough for, for you to stop, you just wanna stop. The lead car's job is to make sure that you just stay where you're at when you spin, right? So you're going to spin and stop and just let everybody go around you. As long as you don't go anywhere you're not supposed to, everyone can go around you. If you start trying to go forward or back, then people have to make decisions. You don't want them to make any decisions. So you just spin out, you stop your rotation. If you're going to do a slow spin out, you can stay on the gas and just keep your rotation so that they know to go wide, whatever you need to do. But as a chase driver, when you see someone lock, hit the lock stops and start trying to pedal it and get out of it, that's when you know, hey, I'm just going to go wide. I always try to bail to driver left in a wide position like this, or if it's a right turn, you'd bail driver right. Oh, that's reverse. <laughs> Got him. BMW strikes again. All right, so they're throwing it in here. Drifting this turn, Matt staying nice and wide. Odie on the chase, nice and tight here. Matt comes in wide, he's gonna spin out, and boom. As you saw him, he was going enough, he had enough, uh, or sorry, he had too low of a speed to bail. Everything was good. He saw he wasn't gonna hit him, he just stopped, and they stopped the rotation. Um, obviously, if there's three or four cars in that position, if you're in car three or four and can't stop, you just go right to the driver's left, right around them. All right, so Matt's leading, Odie's in the chase. Matt waits up for Odie a little bit so they can get a good entry there. 
Matt is on the wide line through here. Going to get that snappy transition through here. Odie's right there on it. Matt goes in, spins out. Odie again just taps that brake, slows down just in time, leaves just enough room. Like This is the same distance that they had separating themselves in tandem. They spun out, they noticed the other car was slowing down, they noticed the gap, and Odie just was able to press on the brakes and do that. All right, another option is to just bail straight off and keep rolling. This is what you do when everyone's stacked up behind you and you don't know what everyone else is gonna do. You just wanna get out of that location as fast as possible. So you hear Matt in the lead, and finally Odie just bails driver left. He knows that no one's going there, he can't physically make it there, and anyone following has room to make their own decisions and it keeps it nice and clean. All right, so you guys went out there and did some laps first. What do you guys think of the cars? Ah, <laughs> you know me. I've been an E36 fan ever since I drove your car way back when. There you go. Chelsea, I'm falling in love with these things. Yeah? They're easy to drive. I don't know quite the boundaries of it, but that's the fun part. You just keep pushing and they take it. It's funny because the front end of this is shorter than both of what you guys normally drive, but you definitely found it. <laughs> Still managed to figure it You gotta it out. find it somewhere. Right. I mean, if there wasn't a front end on it, it would have been probably all right, but... Yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't know, I don't know how too deep it was were. about 10 inches too deep, but either way. Um, but yeah, so when you guys were driving into the turn and pulling the handbrake and going in, can you guys kind of walk us through what you guys were doing in the car as the chase drivers? I guess for me, my big thing is I'm fully focused on the rear half of Odie's car, okay. waiting to see when he kind of starts getting the body movement, right? Tr start transitioning the weight. Because I knew as soon as he starts transitioning the weight, he's going to pull the e-brake. And that's kind of my cue of when to pull the handbrake. I'm not trying to pull it before him, not trying to pull it maybe even the same time, but as soon as he does, I start setting myself up. And when you do that, are you rolling that throttle that last little bit for a second, or are you just staying in one bit? And Absolutely, I'm, I'm on throttle, keeping pace, and then as soon as he starts his transition, I get in it to kind of upset the balance of the car, yeah. loosen it up a little bit and right then before the flip. boom on the handbrake? Boom, bam, on the handbrake. Cool. For me, positioning is really important. I'm looking at Matt's car, where it is on the track. Because if Matt's going to initiate kind of inside of the turn or midline, I got to make sure that I can't just leap on his door. I got to give him a little bit of space and then start creeping up. If he's going really wide and his car's behaving like it's going to float to the outside of the turn, that is my chance to just dive right in on the door. And I know it's going to be a smooth radius all the way throughout the turn. So positioning to me is like really important before I commit where I'm going to bounce you know, right into that turn. Right. right, and then as the lead drivers, you're always trying to stay wide again, can't emphasize that enough so that the chase driver has time and room to do whatever they want to do in that aspect. Absolutely. In a perfect world, we'd all go wide all the time. <laughs> We're warming up with these cars, yeah, yeah. so as the chase driver, you got to hope they're going to go wide, but <laughs> yeah. sometimes things happen where you go a little narrow. And well, I think that was half the problem with our little bump there is I initiated, kind of dove on the inside at the apex of the corner, then went way wide and kind of just hung him out to dry almost. Yeah. And then without looking, I just snapped as hard as I possibly could, <laughs> trying to look like a badass. And then unfortunately for him, he was still applying pressure. You definitely snapped really hard yeah. because the, the front of those, the front end back hit pretty good. But well, well, he only seemed to get the trunk shut though, or zip tied it or something. It's, good, it's, it's good, shut. It's, good. it's shut. <laughs> And it opens. We it made opens? sure the latch works. Oh man, I was not expecting that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then so obviously you guys initiate it, got through that turn. Once you're in that first turn, which is pretty short, like what's your next move? What are you thinking about? And then as a chase driver, what's your move going in towards that transition? You know what's funny? As short as the first corner is, there's so much going on. As soon as you initiate as a follow driver, you're almost letting it coast in until you're at a, at a comfortable distance. And at that point, you pick up the throttle, try to match angle. But even though it's like, you know, less than a second between initiating and actually transitioning. In between that time, I'm tapping the brake, I'm clutching in, maybe pull the handbrake two or three times to adjust so my angle. So when you're tapping the brake, what are you trying to do, slow the car? I think to tap the brake, it's more like I'm on an approach and I want to rotate the car without, you know, clutching in or pulling the handbrake. Got it. Because as you put, touch the front brakes, it does something completely different than it does pulling the handbrake, right? right? And we know if you pull the handbrake, you're kind of going to add angle, slide backwards a little bit. But if you just ease on the brake, maybe it gets a little bit more front wheel grip and you can kind of stop where you're at without adjusting your angle. Got it. Of, you know you want to try to initiate and set your angle to match them right off the bat and not have to adjust it. Absolutely. To me, I'm like setting up after the first turn, all about the exit of the turn is what mm. I'm focusing about. Because you could dive in really nice and, you know, be on the lead car's door. 
but you have to be very aware of how you're going to exit that corner because there's a whole bunch of track left after that. <laughs> so basically when I'm in the corner and I'm happy, I am setting up for the power band to be where I need it to be. So I'm down on throttle and if I don't want to search forward with my left foot, I'm on the brake, mm. literally waiting for the lead car to start picking up speed. And that's when I could stay on throttle and start letting go of the brake or pumping it a little bit if you're going wide or if you're not exiting as fast as I anticipated. And that's really the key for me to set myself up for the transition and the course after that. Right. You know what I was actually doing right before the transition, once we initiate and we're like leaving the corner, I was actually clutching in and revving up. Okay. So instead of hand braking or left foot braking because I didn't want to drop my momentum too much because you know, if your left foot brake just a little too hard, you might get dusted on the transition. Right. So and these cars have boosters, which you guys yeah. are probably oh, not yeah. used to. <laughs> I'm actually used to it. Oh, okay. I'm a weird driver like that. I, I love, love boosters. boosters. Me too. Yeah. Hate it. I'm the same way. Hate it. I feel like my car never stops when I don't have a booster. Oh, we know your Mustang. My foot is stop. like we through the that. firewall and it's that. not stopping. <laughs> I like to just be able to breathe on it. Everyone's like, oh, you can feel it better without a master. I'm like, no way. No. Because <laughs> I know if I just rest the weight <laughs> of my foot. I if disagree. I just rest the weight of my foot on it, yeah. it's perfect. It's balanced. Yeah. If I need more, I push a little bit. I don't like having to brace in the seat. I yeah. like my hands to just hang on the wheel and my feet to just slowly tap. Yep. And if we drive boosters for years and years, we predict when vacuum's going to appear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And when you run out of vacuum, there's only so many pumps. Right. <laughs> as long as you're aware of that, it sounds very funky. But even funky. when the brakes are gone, you still got as much as the regular brakes. Oh, yeah. As long you as you got good pads, hard. they're warm, it's going to work. All right, cool. And then obviously in the transition, leaving room, which we saw how you did not do that. Yeah. Um, that's uh, obviously a key. And like, what are you guys looking for and what are you watching uh, when that's happening? And how do you delay it enough to be able to, A, make enough room and B, be able to surge back onto the person's door? I think there's a couple way of doing that. There's the left foot brake tactic and kind of waiting for their car to start changing directions. You can clutch in and kind of float the car and wait. But really it's all about watching their car and you're really watching the rear of the car because as soon as it starts to make that movement, that's when you kind of got to pull back, make your car change direction and almost try to get on the power before they do so that you can dive back in. Right, absolutely. I agree. I was using the left foot brake method when I tapped you during the transition. Maybe not enough. You know, I felt like <laughs> I, I was really enjoying that because I was like, the car is ready to surge as soon as I lift off the brake. Yeah. I just didn't pay attention to the positioning of your car. Mm. You were going wide to wide with a very snappy transition, which doesn't propel you very quickly from one corner to the other. And I needed to just anticipate that a little more by observing the positioning of your car. Right. And uh, it happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And that was a perfect example of, you know, pay attention and give yourself adequate space. Yeah. And like I said in the video, you can always kind of bail on that situation. You know, if nobody's behind you and you're like, oh, I'm too close, you kind of stop and then jump back in again Let if it's the worst again. case. In Formula D, we are not doing that. No, like you, bumpers you are flying. Bumpers off. That would have just happened. But when you're out there driving with your friends, it does take some time to fix stuff. So you can always just say, oh, I'll just, I'll just tuck my legs. Like that's it. I'm yeah. just going to wait a second. Let them and then the boom, and then reinitiate back up onto their door. Exactly. Um, so yeah, and then obviously that last sweeper, that really long one, that gives you a really long time to fine tune how close you are, and you have actually a lot of time to put it exactly where you want. So like, what are you guys doing in that last long sweeper? You know, it, as a lead driver, I try to flick the car, but run wide and almost stall up for a second after transition before I get back on the power. Give Odie time to transition, get tucked in, run wide, stay on the power, and a huge thing like lead driver etiquette here, don't start cutting across and manging in front of the guy oh like God. you finish At wide finish. and you I shut know. down. You know? I tell people that all the time here on the last turn because they just want to waste their tires for some reason manging. And I might be front tire to front tire exactly. right there. And they're just like, I'm like, how do you not see me? And they're like, gonna blow my door in with the back of their yeah. car. Yeah. yeah, and I've almost whacked that tree right there because yeah. someone starts coming over and I'm like, whoa. And then using my brake booster, I just tap the brakes and slow down quite a bit. Yep. But yeah, and then as a chase driver, like Odie, what are you doing in that last turn, that long sweeper? Well, I know it's a long sweeper, so I know the lead car could run out of steam at some point because mm -hmm. it's such a long radius and we're not, you know, making 500 horsepower here. So I pay attention if he's going really wide, I anticipate that eventually he's going to run out of steam and maybe start sucking in. So I go wide and just pay close attention and I try to aim for the door, but a little bit behind it, especially at a grassroots type environment. You don't want to be on the inside, on the door. I kind of like that 
door a little bit on the quarter panel that gives me all that comfort and wiggle room in case he starts coming off the outside line. Gives you time and, and space to bail. Exactly. Kind of. Perfect. Well, cool, man. I'm glad you guys got to come out and drive and have some fun. And uh, I think we're going to go thrash some three-car tandem here and have some fun. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to getting right. used to these things. Let's do it. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. Boom. Oh, got lost on the dash. <laughs>